preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See, on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. Good evening, online viewers. It is a pleasure to be here with you this evening so that we can worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I warmly welcome you back to another Sunday evening service. Tonight, we will be looking at the theme, Boy, come to church, don't keep God waiting. Boy, come to church, don't keep God waiting. Yes, a very interesting topic this evening. So I encourage you to like and share the page so that others can be blessed by this evening's program. But before we begin, let's put ourselves in the manner for prayer as we ask God's guidance for this evening's program. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much for the breath of life. Lord, as we come before you, we ask that you please forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we just want to lift up this evening's program into your hands. We ask that you cover it with your blood. Be with everyone viewing here this evening so that they can be blessed and be drawn closer to you. Thank you, Lord, for always being there. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for always providing. And we ask that you will send your Holy Spirit upon us so that we can be drawn closer and closer to you. Take charge and control. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. It is now time for you online viewers to join with our choristers as they lead out in song service. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Good evening. We are happy that, we, that God has allowed us to be here to sing songs and praise unto his name. For his glory is gathered here this evening so that we can do song service. And we're hoping that you, that you at home would join us as we sing honor and praise to God. Our first hymn is 316, 316, Live Out Thy Life Within Me. Yeah. 
thank you so much for joining and singing with us. It sounds beautiful over here. I hope it does at home as well. We are going to continue singing song number 311, I Would Be Like Jesus. I would be like Jesus. Do you want to be like Jesus? Gentlemen, you're sounding really good. We're our, not, our next song is song number 330, Take My Life and Let It Be. Song number 330, Take My Life and Let It Be. Lord. 
draw us nearer and as he pulls us closer we pray that we would yield to the spirit and give our all to Jesus draw me nearer
Thank you, choristers, for such a wonderful song service. God's name be praised. At this time, Pastor Bernard Lyons will now intercede on our behalf. Let's all put ourselves in the manner for prayer. It is such a pleasure to give God thanks and praise and even to pray. And at this time, I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. O oh, Father and our God, we say thank you for waking us up. We say thank you for the breath of life and for the ability to be able to listen to your word, to rightly divide the word of truth, to hear for ourselves and to apply to our daily living. We ask, O oh God, even as your word is proclaimed, we pray your continued blessings. We ask, O oh God, for your anointing and your feeling. And we pray that as we continue in your presence, that we will be closer drawn to Jesus Christ. And by beholding you, we will become changed. We pray your blessings upon those that are listening at this time. May they be attentive to your word. May they have a yearning, a panting to know more about Jesus Christ. May they speak about Christ to their friends, their neighbors, their associates, so that they can be recognized as kingdom builders, preparing men and women for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, even as we look towards the eastern sky, we pray, O oh God, that our eyes will be fixed upon you, that we will not allow the things of this world to distract us and to cause us to stray, but instead they would go strangely dim in the light of your glory and of your grace. And so continue to be with us. Direct our paths. And Lord, when you come, may we find a resting place, a place of security and abundance of joy with you. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Lyons. Let's turn to our Bibles as we take our scripture reading, which will be taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Listen while I read. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Good is the reading of God's word. As you meditate on the reading, let's all open our hearts to receive this special message in song by For His Glory. Like it does Even though I know we're only here for a while How come it never seems like long enough I don't know just when my time is coming Share and I 
but very powerful. And tonight, he will speak to us more on the topic, Boy, come home, don't keep God waiting. Online viewers, I present to you, Pastor Charles Gittens. Hey, good evening. God is so good. <clears throat> it's nice to be alive. Uh, and definitely, it is good when we can participate in worship. <clears throat> this evening, I deal with a subject. Boy, come to church. Don't keep God waiting. Let me say it again. Boy, come to church. Don't keep God waiting. Let us pray. Our God and Father, thanks ever so much for your goodness, grace, and mercy. <clears throat> thanks for your Love towards us, sending your son Jesus Christ to die on our behalf. At this time, as I delve into your word, please guide my mind and help that what I say would make sense. And even children will understand what I say. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> you know, whenever people talk about church, uh, they behave as if it's a place where they should not go. And sometimes I wonder, when they do come to church, why is it they sit in the back seat? And I'm just thinking that if people want to fill a church with people, they should take all the front seats out and leave the back seats. Uh, listen. Listen. Uh, we must understand that it is not only when they hatch, when they match, and when they dispatch, people should come to church. Meaning, uh, when a baby born, uh, when people get married, or when somebody dies. That's not the only time people should come to church. I went to the U.S. for the first time 
many, many years ago. And when I came back home, they asked me, Charles, what is it you like most about the U.S.? Without batting an eyebrow, I said, church, yes, that is what I liked most about the U.S. at that time. Uh, the singing, they never, uh, they never tried to hurry out of church. They enjoyed church. Uh, and so today, as I delve into my subject, uh, the church is really not just the building, <clears throat> but the church is the called out body of Christ. Uh, the church can also be called the hospital for sinners. Let's go to the word. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he, Adam, said, I heard thy voice in the garden, <clears throat> And I was afraid uh, because I was naked and I hid myself. Verse 11 of Genesis chapter 3 says, And he said, uh, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Uh, listen, uh, this is the story of the fall. And you're wondering <clears throat> how... Does the subject fit into this? And hear me out. Uh, they sinned in that they made a decision uh, to eat from the tree that God told them not to eat from. And in the text, you would notice verse 8. After they ate, uh, God it is who came down to church. Why do I say that? Uh, listen, the text says, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. God had a habit of coming and visiting his two member congregation, Adam and Eve, on a daily basis. And God chose a comfortable time, uh, the cool of the day time uh, when he can uh, commune and communicate with Adam. Uh, but the point here is uh, that they knew what time uh, God would want to be with them every day to have church. Uh, but this day, uh, they kept God waiting uh, because when God came down, normally uh, they will come to church, uh, be at church with God who is the minister. Uh, but here I notice uh, when they sinned, uh, they made a decision uh, to run and hide from God and to cover themselves with fig leaves. Uh, this was guilt bearing dung upon them like guilt and shame in that they had disobeyed God now this is the most important point in the sermon I would make listen to it uh, when people sin uh, they think uh, that that's the time they should run from God uh, I notice here Adam and Eve are reflecting that thought. However, uh, when an individual has sinned, uh, they have broken God's commandments. Uh, that is the time uh, they should run to God. Uh, because that is the time uh, here I notice in Genesis chapter 3, uh, God uh, did not refuse uh, to come to church that day. He was waiting for Adam and Eve, uh, wanting to have that church service with them when they sinned. Uh, the point in this introductory part of the story is uh, whoever you are, uh, whether you're a backslider, uh, whether you're a sinner, whether you're a criminal, uh, whether you're a commandment breaker, whoever you are, uh, please remember uh, that God is still interested in you. He still loves you and he still uh, wants you to come to church even though you have sinned. I want you to get that. Uh, how do I know that? I said how I know that. Uh, because God did not skip or miss 
church with Adam and Eve, even though two, only two individuals in the congregation, and still a God came. He ready for song service. He ready for the prayer. He ready for, for talking uh, with Adam and Eve. Uh, but they were the individuals who were running from God. I want you to look at it this way. Uh, God created us. Uh, God it is who made every part of the human machinery. Uh, God knows how expensive we are. Uh, so God always wants to be in fellowship with us. Uh, like a mother, uh, if a mother has whatever number of children, uh, be it five or four or six, whatever number, uh, that mother uh, likes to be in relationship uh, with her children. And uh, you must understand uh, that sometimes uh, mothers give up on their children. Uh, but God, the Bible tells us, like as a father, uh, pities his children. Uh, so the Lord pities them uh, that fear him. Uh, so never, never, this is the most important part of the sermon. Uh, never you say that I am too sinful like Adam and Eve uh, running from God. Don't do that. Uh, God is still interested in you, uh, trying to save you. So boy or girl, Whoever you are, uh, if you have sinned, you have fallen short, uh, you feel cheap, uh, you feel shame, uh, you feel ashamed of what you have done. Uh, do not continue uh, to meddle in uh, your sinful ways and practices. Uh, but boy or girl, God is at church waiting for you. Uh, boy or girl, uh, listen, come to church. Don't Keep God waiting. Uh, listen, when God asked Adam, Adam, where art thou? God was not trying to locate Adam at uh, geographic location. Listen, we can't hide from God. Uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 136, uh, Whither shall I go from thy presence? Uh, uh, the psalmist makes it very clear uh, that we cannot hide from God. So the better thing to do uh, when you sin, come back to church uh, because God is waiting for you. Uh, when God met Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, uh, he asked them, what is your state? What is your spiritual state? What is happening to you, Adam and Eve? Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. Poor serpent. He can't talk by himself. He couldn't answer. But listen to this. Many times when a person has sinned, they look for a scapegoat to blame. Uh, the best way to approach sin is not to run from God or run from the church, uh, but to accept responsibility uh, for your sin. And like David in Psalm 51, uh, come to God and beg him uh, to create in you a clean heart. Ask God, uh, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew uh, that right spirit within me. In other words, uh, when you itemize and accept and say, uh, yes, Lord, I have sinned. Uh, please forgive me and come back to church. Uh, that is the better way to approach the sin problem. Uh, don't blame somebody for the sins that you have committed. I notice in Genesis chapter 3 uh, that when God was complete talking with Adam and Eve, he instituted and explained the sacrificial system. And our God killed an animal, shed blood, showing to Adam and Eve, you see what you have done? Uh, that will cause uh, the blood of the Son of God, Jesus Christ himself. Uh, he killed an animal uh, and clothed Adam and Eve with the skin. Uh, this is the first time I am seeing a tailor referred to in the Bible. And then God put clothes on Adam and Eve, covered their nakedness. Uh, you know, uh, as an aside point, uh, that is why uh, when we come to church, uh, we must remember to put on our clothing and make sure we cover our nakedness. And in a spiritual sense, 
Only Jesus Christ uh, can cover our nakedness. Uh, we were born in sh sin and shaped in iniquity. Only Jesus Christ uh, with his robe of righteousness can cover us and save us. You know, Adam and Eve were taken care of by God. He being, God being the minister, the pastor, the priest, the prophet in the church that they call into them. And God is calling to you today. He is saying to you, whoever you are who has left church or perhaps never came to church, you look at church as a group of hypocrites coming there. Don't look at it so. Uh, tell yourself, uh, sink it into your brain that God wants to save you, whoever you are. Understand it. He wants to save you. Uh, you know, after Adam and Eve sinned, They got two children, Cain and Abel. And I notice in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 5 uh, that Cain and Abel had church also uh, because I notice in verse 5, but unto Cain and to his offering, offering is what we bring to church, unto Cain and his offering, he, God, had no respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, uh, shalt, not, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Uh, so God has a conversation in church uh, with Cain and Abel, and he's telling Cain, uh, "Don't bring, uh, don't don't bring fruits. Uh, bring an animal uh, which is significant, a spotless lamb, uh, which is significant of the Lamb Jesus Christ, who would come one day and die on behalf of mankind." But Cain was disobedient. And in verse 8 it says uh, in Genesis chapter 4, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, uh, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Uh, listen, uh, Cain is rude. He should have humbled himself and answered Papa God correctly. Uh, the point here as I'm seeing it is that even after Cain had sinned, I'm on my team. Even after Cain had sinned, uh, God, it seems to me, is the one who humbled himself and came and asked Cain, uh, the murderer, uh, where is your brother? Uh, the rude answer that Cain gave to God, am I my brother's keeper? Uh, God could have and killed him there. Uh, but I am bringing out the mercy of God. I am bringing out the long suffering and nature of God. Uh, sometimes we think uh, that when we sin, uh, we must run away from God. Uh, we must try to escape his wrath. We have to understand right here in the little after the creation story. And a little after the fall, I am noticing uh, that Cain did a hideous thing uh, to murder his own blood brother and yet God came and asked uh, Cain uh, what's the matter and even though Cain is rude to God uh, the mercy of God uh, still stands out in allowing Cain to live whoever you are stop counting your sins Stop counting your sins. Uh, stop uh, saying uh, that you are too wicked for God to save you. Uh, God wants to dialogue with you. Uh, the rude boy Cain who did not humble himself. Uh, God uh, still uh, chose uh, to come and speak to Cain. And I am saying uh, this evening, 
Whoever you are, stop counting your sin. Stop grading yourself as too sinful to be saved. Listen, Jesus Christ pointed out in, in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So don't you think that because you are smothered and covered with sin and iniquity, don't you think that God hates you uh, just as he did not hate Adam and Eve after they had sinned and he did not hate Cain after he had murdered his brother. God does not hate you. He wants to save you. I want you to understand. So come to church. Don't keep God waiting. Uh, here I notice as I go on uh, that the children of Israel were in bondage. I'm going to jump this quickly. And in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8, I notice a statement. It says, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And the nation of Israel are delivered from slavery in Egypt. And God tells uh, Moses uh, to build uh, the wilderness church. Uh, this is a moving church. Why did God do that? God did that because uh, people who are enslaved uh, would not know properly how to worship further. Uh, most likely, uh, they had forgotten how to keep God's law. And the most important thing or furniture in the wilderness church was the Ark of the Covenant. And within the Ark of the Covenant, uh, that sacred box uh, was uh, the law of God, uh, the Ten Commandments. It makes the point today uh, that when people go to church, uh, they need, uh, among all that they do, uh, they need to focus on knowing and Keeping uh, the law of God. Uh, God's law is a transcript of his character. It's a reflection of who he is. And when we come to church, uh, no matter how we worship or what we say to God, uh, we must remember uh, that when we obey God's law, as was kept in the Ark of the Covenant in the wilderness church, uh, that is when uh, God is pleased with our behavior. Church people, whoever you are, you must not say that you had a good worship service and you are teaching people to break God's law. Don't do that. Uh, listen, uh, God's law is what was broken in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned. Uh, listen, Adam and Eve coveted and they stole. That was God's property. He said, don't eat from this tree. They coveted and they stole. Uh, so they broke God's Ten Commandments. And I am saying uh, that the most important uh, piece of furniture or thing uh, that was in uh, the, the wilderness church was God's law. And so similarly today, we have to understand how important God's law is. Uh, because God was trying uh, to teach the children of Israel as they came out of Egyptian bondage how to keep his law. So when you come to church, you need uh, to focus always among whatever you do on keeping all of God's law uh, because God is concerned about his law. Listen, God was so concerned about his law and how it's kept and how it's handled uh, that when Uzzah uh, put his hand, he was unauthorized uh, to carry uh, that covenant box, that box uh, with the Ten Commandments. When he put his hand unauthorized, uh, God smite him. Yeah, he was smitten by God. Uh, why? Because God's rules have to be obeyed and church people have to know to obey God's law. They have to be taught in church how to obey God's law. Let's go on to another church. 
So we spoke about the church in Eden, uh, that Adam and Eve uh, were only the two members that God came down and had church with them. Uh, we spoke about Cain and Abel offering, having church, and Cain disobeying God. And then eventually, uh, when he realized that Abel obeyed God and received a blessing, uh, listen, this, this is something that happens all the time. In, uh, when individuals obey God and receive a blessing, uh, those who uh, disobey God, uh, they are the individuals who are not annoyed with those of us who obey God's law. Be careful with that. Uh, now we come uh, to uh, the wilderness church and we notice that the most important thing in the wilderness church uh, was the Ark of the Covenant which housed or kept uh, God's Ten Commandments saying that the Ten Commandments uh, should uh, be kept in churches, uh, literally it should be put up and people should be taught within churches uh, to keep God's Ten Commandments. We go now to Jesus Christ and his church. Uh, Jesus, when he came to this earth, walked the streets of Galilee. He had a 12-member church, the disciples. And in his 12-member church, he had all types of people. That's why the church is a hospital for sinners. You don't have to be a saint to be a member of God's church. No! At the foot of the cross, at the ground level, uh, Jesus is dealing with his 12-member uh, congregation. Some of them like cuss. Some of them like thief money. Uh, uh, some of them like criticize uh, one set uh, want, uh, wanted uh, to be on the right hand and on the left hand of uh, Jesus Christ in his kingdom uh, then, uh, then, then, then some of them uh, were pushing uh, the idea uh, that they should be greatest in the kingdom all types of individuals uh, belonged to Jesus a 12 member congregation but something I want to point out here uh, that uh, many times you don't look at. In Mark chapter 1, talking about Jesus and his 12-member congregation, his church, Mark chapter 1 of verse 35, it says, 135 of Mark, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and they prayed, and listen to this now, and Simon, and they that were with him, Followed after him. Here I notice I am deducing uh, from this text uh, that Jesus had a habit of getting up early and having church, talking with his father. Uh, but listen, the part I want you to get. Uh, verse 36 says, And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Uh, so here I notice uh, that Jesus has church every day as he communes with his father his prayer life i'm referring to uh, listen uh, you thought it's only weekend you're supposed to come to church no uh, you're supposed to come to church and have church on a daily basis wherever you domicile uh, wherever you live uh, with all the sin in the world uh, you cannot exist on a one day a week church going uh, no way now when we look at the news and we see earlier in the year uh, that a six year old boy uh, goes to school uh, with a gun and passes through metal detector and shoots his teacher uh, then uh, we know uh, that you cannot afford uh, to go to church only on weekend what am I referring to I am saying uh, that in our homes, our children, husbands and wives uh, need to come together on a daily basis and have church. Uh, that is where uh, you teach your children the Ten Commandments. Uh, that is where you teach uh, your children uh, that they need to get up early uh, so that we can have family worship. Uh, family worship uh, is, uh, is done uh, when uh, we, we put aside every distraction because you know uh, you know in this modern day and age uh, we have uh, weapons of mass distraction uh, which uh, would be your devices uh, so you have to uh, and the same weapon of mass destruction uh, can be used uh, so that we can have a good and proper worship in the morning that's your church in your home uh, listen to this uh, when uh, people uh, who belong to a congregation have church in their homes 
every day, uh, then church at weekends uh, become better. I want you to understand that here Jesus Christ set the example uh, with his disciples in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. Uh, so, and they prayed. I am noticing here uh, that in a personal manner, uh, we need uh, to talk to God. Your prayer life has to be right uh, and it can only be right uh, if on many occasions you as head of household or you children or teenagers or you, how you have that prayer spot in your home, wherever that is. Uh, Jesus Christ had it, and I noticed his 12 member congregation, including Simon, and they that were with him followed after him. So come to church, not weekends alone, but during the week. Uh, the church after Jesus Christ went to heaven. Uh, listen, after Jesus Christ went to heaven, almost true. Uh, after Jesus Christ went to heaven, guess what? He gave a command. And he said they should go. The command, I won't read it now, but the command uh, was that they must go into all the world and raise up churches. I'm paraphrasing, yeah. And here I noticed that the disciples were doing that. And in the book of Acts, chapter 12, you're going to read it. Uh, listen, uh, Peter was kept in prison. Listen to this. Uh, but they had house churches. Uh, Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Uh, but Peter, uh, Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Uh, what am I hitting at here? Uh, listen, you think church is only held in the building that is designated? Here I notice the church after Pentecost. Listen, they had house churches. Uh, the young lady, Rhoda, and others were praying for Peter because James was beheaded by Herod. And Herod realized that he was getting popular uh, by persecuting or trying to get rid of God's church. And guess what? He locked up Peter. But I noticed here in the house church uh, that they were praying, listen, when you come to church, if you do nothing, you need to get down on your knees and pray. Uh, pray for yourself and pray for others. Uh, petition God. Uh, here, uh, Peter has a problem. Uh, Peter is sleeping between two guards. He's at peace with God. Expects to die uh, the next day. Uh, but the house church, Rhoda and the others, uh, they have come to church. The called out ones, they are praying on behalf of Peter's deliverance. And Peter is delivered from prison. Listen, man, when we come to church, don't be selfish with your problem. Don't keep your problem and your burden to yourself. The Bible tells us, bear ye one another's burdens. Yes, the Bible tells us that. And in Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 7, it says, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, their burnt offering, their sacrifices shall be accepted unto mine altar. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So when you come to church, don't miss it. If you do nothing, you must be in the habit of praying to God. Why church? We come to church. To meet with God. Not because God wants to condemn us. When you're thinking about going out to church. Be it a house church. Be it family worship in the morning. I want you to seriously picture in your mind. That God is interested in you coming to church. And worshiping with him. Not because he wants to destroy you. But because he wants to save you. Why church? Because God wants to fellowship with us. I'm wrapping up. Uh, why you need to come to church. And don't keep God waiting. Uh, because God wants to fellowship with you. He enjoys your company. 
Yeah, you got to understand that. Uh, why church? Uh, because God wants, when we come to church, for us to be taught his law, to respect his law, and to keep all of his law, all ten commandments. You can't forget one. And the one that people like to forget is the one that God knew we would want to forget. So he prefaced that one by saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why church? Come to church because God wants us to help him to save lost humanity. That is why our marching orders to evangelize uh, comes to us and comes to the disciples of Christ even today. Uh, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 28 uh, verse 18. Teaching them to observe all things. Yes, uh, that's our marching orders. Uh, when we come to church, apart from meeting friends and fellowshipping, which is good, uh, we come to church so that we can be taught and go out and teach others. Uh, E.G. White says uh, in Acts of the Apostles, God's purpose for the church. She says the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service. And its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. So whatever we do, uh, when we come to church and we meet God and we are energized, uh, we must remember uh, that salvation is uh, like one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. You cannot come to church and bottle up all of what you learn uh, for yourself. No, you got to go out and tell somebody. Uh, the question may be asked, will there be church in heaven? And the answer is yes, because in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 23, that's why you got to practice church here on earth. Practice being at church with God here on earth. Uh, at, in your home, family worship, as well as, uh, listen to this thing important, you know, uh, the family worship and uh, the weekend church. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 23 says, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all all flesh come uh, to worship before me, said the Lord. When you think, yeah, there will be church in heaven, the text saying it. Isaiah 66 and verse 23. Uh, when you think of all the trials, the tribulations, the criticisms, the attacks, uh, the diseases, the natural disasters, uh, the murders, the crimes of war, innocent children, elderly being destroyed. Uh, when you think of uh, the refugee crisis that we have in Europe, uh, when you think uh, 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 of the fact uh, that, listen man, uh, many families have only one parent running the family and the, the father figure or the father is an absentee and children are sometimes being taken advantage of. Uh, when, you, uh, when you think of Jesus Christ and how he came and he died uh, so that we can have life and have it more abundantly uh, knowing uh, that when he comes uh, we will go uh, with him to heaven. Uh, listen man, you can't help but thinking about being a church in heaven with Jesus Christ. He paid the price. This evening, as I start preaching, I want to say to us that God is still interested in the human race. And let me personalize it. God is still interested in you, Charles. God is still interested in a Charles listening to me, in David, in Mary, in Jane, whoever. God is still interested in you. And no matter what you have done, be it like Cain, be it like Adam and Eve, be it like whichever sinner, be it like David, listen, please understand that God loves you with an everlasting love. He doesn't want you to run from him. No! Many times when we give testimony and we say in 1984, uh, when I found the Lord, some people give that testimony. In 1993, when I found the Lord, it's now you found the Lord. The Lord found you. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary. And he's calling you back to him. Why, church? 
Uh, we, we, we need to come back to church. We need to be a part of church. Uh, we need to fellowship with the brethren. Uh, listen, why church? This may sound strange. We need to come to church because families sometimes begin right in the church. I got my wife in church. Yes, because I come to church and I observe the young ladies and I noticed one who was good. Not only good looking, good in terms of deeds. And my family began right there. Uh, why church? Uh, because at church we get a chance to teach others how to do church, how to run church, so that when we, the older ones, pass off the scene of action, church can still continue. And as I close, now Peter is the head of the church. No, it's Jesus Christ. Because he bought us with a price. His blood. Yeah, he bought us with a price. And as I close, I want to tell you a story. Short story. Many times, we come to church and we don't invite others to church. We must stop that. Invite the man in the rum shop. Invite the policeman, invite the nurse, invite the child who you just give money to when he or she don't have a bus fare. Invite people to church. And hear this. It's not fair for you to enjoy church and don't invite others. Let them get a chance. Watch some years ago, many, many years ago, before I became a pastor, I used to go to the police station and play domino with the fellas and chat in a certain village called Parima. Uh, where uh, I was heading the school. And there was a young man there, there. His name was Valentino Wellington. And for whatever reason, the two of us used to chat a lot. He was originally from Essequibo. And I used to invite him to church, but he never came. And one Friday afternoon, I invited him to church, and he said he would come. I never thought he would come. But listen. When I got to church, was a community uh, guest day. When I got to church that day, that Sabbath, Valentino Wellington was in church before me, and he never stopped coming. He got married. He and his wife, they got baptized, and, and they, 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 they got children. The chil uh, what I'm telling you is uh, that up to today, Valentino Wellington, who I invited to church, is still a member of God's church. So I am saying uh, when you hurry and go to church, you must always be thinking about who, <coughs> about who you should or can invite to church because you have influence over that person. When you do that, you are really extending a blessing for somebody and helping somebody to give the life to Jesus Christ. So guess what? As I close today, boy, you stop coming to church because you feel people will criticize you. You feel that Jesus Christ has condemned you. No, he hasn't. Because Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Do your sins be a scarlet? Jesus Christ will wash you and make you clean. Don't delay. Don't delay. People come to church forcefully when six strong men Lift the casket and bring them into the church. That must not be the case with you, boy or girl. No! You hear the message of salvation. Some of you have left church and you don't want to come back for all types of reasons. Don't do that. Don't let six strong men lift you and bring you into the church. Raise you and bring you into the church there because that would be too late. Now is the time for you to Come to church because you don't want to keep God waiting. God and Father, somebody is lingering. 
Somebody is saying they want to enjoy the world a little more. Somebody may be saying, I want to enjoy carnival. Somebody may be saying, hey, I'm too young to come to church. Let that person know today, God, that you did not give up on Adam and Eve. You did not give up on Cain. Uh, you did not give up on uh, the church that you left, went to heaven, and was raised up the house church. Let somebody know today that you are there waiting with open arms to welcome them home. Let them know that you, God, their Father, sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross of Calvary so that they can have life and have it more abundantly. Bless somebody who has made up the mind during this sermon to come back to church. They know the truth, but they're delaying. Let them know that delay is dangerous and distractions can be dangerous. Let them know that now is the time for them to come back to church and to give their life to Jesus Christ. Bless children, bless youths, bless older ones, bless adults. As we take church seriously in terms of our homes as well as weekend church, uniting with the brethren, fellowshipping with the brethren. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. May God richly bless you. Thank you, Pastor Gittens, for such a powerful message from God. Amen. Let's all share what we have learned here so that others can be blessed and be drawn closer to God. We have come to the end of our service this evening, but before I leave, I would like to share some announcements with you. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m., and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-9040-9613. Passcode 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Remember Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and a read broadcast at 8 p.m. on Tuesdays. Youth Live Unplug on Friday at 7 p.m. and our Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. followed by our Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. And join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Live Grenada as we continue our Sunday evening service let us pray dear heavenly father lord jesus we want to thank you so much for your presence with us here this evening we want to thank you for such a powerful message and we pray that the online viewers has been blessed and they will be drawn closer to you and they will share it with someone out there continue to be with us as we go through the week we pray that you will go forward and make a way and have your way in our lives. Continue to provide for us. Continue to protect us, Lord Jesus, and help us to keep our eyes focused on you. Help us to always communicate with you and read your word, Lord Jesus, so that we can be strengthened in you. Take charge and control, and we thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering prayers. In your name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful week ahead, everyone, and may God bless you. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength.
My eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Oh